what are the misconceptions about yeah, our cannabis extraction technology? And that's one of that, them, yeah. butane. Butane, the vilification, THC, and yeah. the vilification of butane. So if I own a CO2 device or that kind of workflow, I call butane toxic and dangerous is the two words. It's dangerous meaning if I use it in my garage and my pilot light blows right. myself up, I guess it is dangerous. Butane is a very stable product. You, you couldn't tell the difference between butane and gasoline, mm -hmm. kind of, if I put it in front of you. Yeah. Um, and it's a very stable solvent and a very reliable. And commonly used. Commonly used in other industries. Yeah. But also classed in this LPG mm -hmm. category, which is propane gas, propane fuel. Mm -hmm. So we, with the fire code and with building code, so <laughs> with science and industry, you get classed your building rated Right. Industry one, and you just do kind of whatever you want to bring in there. Yeah. Um, you have professional architects and professional fire protection people, and you've done it before. You're following the same practices mm -hmm. that have been done over and over and over again. Nobody bats an eye. But as a cannabis industry, you have to rewrite the wheel for fire code yeah. and everything. <laughs> That's what it seems team. like, yeah. So um, it's, but it's not toxic and dangerous. And the second thing is it's biodegradable mm -hmm. yeah so um you know it's the number one gasoline car emission um and it doesn't contribute to greenhouse gases it butane and propane are simple chain molecules mm -hmm. in the atmosphere they coalesce and fall back down to the earth and they're mm -hmm. used as food for microorganisms yeah so this is the chain of a simple hydrocarbon mm -hmm. um my understanding is they don't want us to do that they want us to recover it the only trend there, I'm not going to reuse it in processes because mm -hmm. you ask any other processes, if they reuse a right. raw material that they can't essentially purify, it would yeah. affect downstream processes. So you could just, maybe you can burn it mm -hmm. in like a propane, so, right. but I'm creating CO2 now. Yeah. So our dream workflow would be to get procure hydrocarbons, uh, pure, pure, pure hydrocarbons process using once burn them to generate electricity, catch the CO2 to make dry mm. ice. And then use and that then as co roll it, yeah, yeah, and then roll this process over again, but that comes with resources. Right, yeah, no, I, 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 I definitely like that idea, that sort of closed loop thinking, but beyond yeah. the, the stainless steel, like yeah. the, the simple, you know, what people think of closed loop systems, but, uh, you know, closed but loop But just a closed, yeah, but then, yeah, and so, but, and then it's right with what it comes in contact with. We only come in contact with steel, glass, PTFE, mm -hmm. silicon, um, and that, and that's about it. Ceramic mm -hmm. is, I think, the last yeah. thing we come in contact with. And all those substances are inert. We the PTFE is incredibly important. Yeah, yeah. Because it's an incredibly Im inert compound it lines all these caps yep exactly um we don't recover stuff that touches certain plastics you know only the ptfe is yep. against that, that was really um, big in all of my lab work you know yes. any holding samples has to be ptfe line lids and, it, and, and as far as the silicone is concerned it just absorbs it doesn't leach or contribute any mm -hmm. sort of negativity that's the pr that's the concept of silicone any sort mm -hmm. of other plastic or polymer right. hosing or, or mm -hmm. gasket could leach in the other direction depending upon how it was made yeah and sometimes you can taste it yeah um, bpa so so there you go and the last thing about what i just talked about it applies to cartridges as well so it never put any of these products in a plastic cartridge yes. unless it was ptfe yeah. so you tell me it, that would probably be a 15 dollar cartridge pod right if just the just whole for, just structure the was ptfe yeah, yeah so what I found out about the heavy metals and cartridges, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of it's the casting, it's the the molds. They they pour all these molds to make all the casts, mm -hmm. and they're reused over and over and over and over again. And so they just have to pour, pour a virgin mold, which is how they solve the uh. heavy metal problem. But most of them come from black plastics. So the black plastic tip mm -hmm. is where a lot of the heavy metals were detected because that's where the cheapest molds are used to make those tips interesting yeah and then you add with a little bit of terpenes wow. and you're getting some leaching so um it just draws a parallel well 
there's a ton of cheap Chinese plastic yeah. everywhere in our life and in all of our goods and surfaces and whatever yeah. we buy and all of our new stuff. So we come in contact with all of that, all those toxins all the time. I'm not trying to say this is safe. Right. I'm trying to explain just the reality of our toxicological situation. Toxicological thresholds mm -hmm. in life as we know. Well, it. and the dose makes the poison, right? Yes. I mean. So we keep with all ceramics and all glass and all steel, and we know those products after using them over and over again, and putting these things in them and letting them sit for years mm -hmm. in back seats of cars and under wherever, and pulling them back out. Mm -hmm. And knowing there's no degradation or etching or or anything like that, um, yeah, you know, no off taste even after that long period of time. So you know we're confident mm -hmm. keeping to those substances are good. But like a pod, we don't put our products in pod because we yeah. taste that tip right when we break it out of its package and we taste that mm -hmm. plastic tip from interacting with the terpenes. So it's not an authentic experience and it's easy to eliminate.